yeah. Okay, we are live again, this time with Heather Stewart. Heather is a speaker and leadership coach, and I'm just going to read her bio off because it's so great and it clearly describes what she does. She supports her clients, uh, help them identify meaning and purpose, set achievable goals, create healthy boundaries, and find true satisfaction without feeling like they have to do it all. Ah, oh, great. And Heather's helped me a lot over the years, just getting organized, taking my million ideas, distilling them down into one uh, project or bullet pointed list. And Miss Heather, what do you have to say for yourself today? Anything to add to that? Uh, no, I mean, I don't have anything to add. I think it's a wonderful description. I'd like to meet this lady. So. <laughs> She's fantastic. <laughs> a lot to live up to there. <laughs> oh, I'm excited to be here. Yeah. And I don't know if you want me to just start in or if you wanted to talk a little bit about. Well, we're going to talk about, this is all on your uh, blog post or a page on your website, which I'm going to link to below. So you can just watch this and let this information waft by you. Because if you want to go back and read what we're talking about, it's all going to be there. But I wrote down a couple of the points that you had in that post, which was excellent. Um, and so what it, we were talking about today is structure and finding the perfect balance of structure, but not being too rigid, but also having a set schedule. And the first thing you talked about was keeping a bedtime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why yeah. is that an important thing? Well, in general, all of this is really meant to help our brains function a little bit better. Our brains don't like change, so we get more tired. And I think, especially in the beginning, so the posts that we're gonna link to, we wrote early on in this kind of craziness that's happening. And so we really wanted to help people put a few things in place. So the, the, so the lists that you'll see on the page aren't meant for you to do all of the things. It's really pick and choose which, what are a couple things you could do to add a little bit of structure. And if we don't like the word structure, which, I'm, we're seeing a little bit of a backlash for that right now during this, again, crazy COVID time. Mm -hmm. If we think about it as automating, what are a couple of things that we can try to automate in our day so that our brains don't have to work quite as hard to make so many decisions? Mm -hmm. And it'll be different for each of us, right? I think for me, really, it was, I don't tend to be a great sleeper. So me, sleep was really one that I have to go to bed at the same time every day have to wake up at the same time. Mm -hmm. Some other people, it might be a couple of other things because they have kids there and maybe for them, the little piece of automation or structure is something a little bit different. Like we're, we're making sure no matter what we're doing, we're always sitting down to dinner at the same time every day. And really with kids, it's even more important to have that structure in the schedule. But again, I think I'm going to change the name right now to automation versus structure. Right. Um, and really, it's just been in the past couple of weeks. I, I had a client who, I, I, so let me back up and say, I love, love structure. That's how I operate. I'm at my best when I know what the guidelines are, what are the boundaries, these are the things I'm going to do. Bam, got it. And I tend to get a little overzealous with clients with structure. And so I had one client in the past week say, okay, I'm actually getting stressed about the things that I have to do in a day, and that's never my goal, Right, is to add more stress to a client's life. It's really, if we can automate some things and add some space to your brain, then the likelihood of you being able to joy, enjoy some of those moments in between, and at the mm -hmm. end of your day, feel a little bit more satisfied, and again, be able to enjoy a funny movie or dinner with your family, mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. That's really the goal. And mm -hmm. so when we had written this post again toward the beginning, we had a section where we talk about individuals, here's some things to think about. Or if it's you and a partner living together, here are some things to think about. Or if you have families and you're doing homeschooling and you gotta schedule meals and kids screaming in the background, and what are some things that we can take off of our brain's plate ahead of time? to really, again, try to make it a little bit easier on ourselves each day. Mm -hmm. I sense. like this idea of calling it automation rather than structure. And you mentioned structure fatigue, and I've read there's research on decision fatigue. Like we can only make so many choices in a day, and then we just are like, <clears throat> Yeah, yep. 
So yeah. if you automate a lot of this, you don't have to think about what am I going to wear? What mm-hmm. am I going to cook for lunch? You've got your clothes laid out. You've got your. Yeah. Food. Yeah. And I think, I think Steve Jobs was one of the um, pretty famous people who wore the same thing every single day because that was one less thing that he had to decide about. Now, these days with Zoom, we don't really have to decide what kind of pants we're going to wear. <laughs> It's business on the top, party on the bottom for me. I don't know about everybody else, but, <laughs> but really that's been a little bit easier, but I think it is helpful for some reason. At night, it takes me five minutes to pick out what I'm going to wear. If I have to try to do it in the morning while I'm also getting ready and what am I going to eat? Do I have enough time? And what's right. the link out to somebody for the, so I, I think what can we automate ahead of time? It's the same thing. I'm sure that you work with people on too, and in setting up kind of healthy meals. Sunday, can you take a block of time Sunday to kind of set up some stuff right. for the week? So Pre-chop yeah. your veggies, pre-cut some stuff so you don't have to do it right then. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then one of the things you had on here was making a list. Uh, my mother is a list maker. If I had a nickel for every time Claire has said, let's get organized, let's make a list. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love making lists. Yep, me too. I I grew up with the same thing, absolutely. And I would challenge people that their list really should include what's the one main thing I need to do today, which is different than a little task checklist. What's the one main thing I need to do today? That's always my challenge for people. And, And I think if you know your brain, so if you know that in the morning I'm better at this type of work, Later in the day, I'm better at this type of work. So if you think about checking off a bunch of to-do list items versus kind of big picture thinking and ideas and being creative and that sort of stuff, how does your brain work? And then try to schedule that type of stuff for different times of day. And honestly, if you check off your big goal early in the morning, then right, have at it. Put another big goal for the second part of the day. But really, I think the more priorities that we add to a list, the less likely we are to do those. Mm-hmm. So like poo. I like the thinking about when your energy wanes during the day too. Um, my, I had originally thought I was going to get up first thing in the morning, get right to some emails and work on client programs. And what I like to do is have my coffee in my bathrobe and I watch a little webinar. And I just kind of let my brain wake up. Now that doesn't seem super productive, but I'm like, I'm doing something and it's changed from what I thought it was going to be. So can you speak to how to keep some fluidity or flexibility within this structure or to change it up so it doesn't feel so rigid? Yeah. Well, I think again, it'll be a little different for everyone, but maybe if you think about like halving up your day or putting it into three sections of this is the kind of stuff I'm going to do this time of day. Or if I know I have to have meetings and I'm really at my best and I'm most energized in the morning, then I try to do all my meetings in the morning. Again, where possible, it's not always possible to do this, but I think for me, once I really thought about, oh, my brain works in this way in the morning. So if I get right up, I don't open any, if I have a lot of detailed work to do, I do that best in the morning. And once I realize that, then my goal is to get right up, not open any emails or communi- things, Facebooks and all of that sort of stuff. Don't even open it. I go to a separate table where I have nothing else but the project I have to work on. And that's where I have my best thinking for that type of stuff. And then for me, I have more energy to do physical stuff later in the day is when I start to get antsy. Like I'm on my Mm -hmm. wall right now and I'm a little antsy, but that's just because I've had (laughs) two cups of coffee. (laughs) I love this, that you have a separate physical space if you're going to do a different type of work. Mm -hmm. And then you talked about getting physical. Let's talk about that. What about some movement structured into your day? Yes. Well, While I know that I'm much better about having a lot of energy for that type of stuff later in the day, I'm trying to do a little bit here and there throughout the day. Because also what we know is that our brain will function better when we're thinking if we do our thinking in like maybe 50 to 60 minute chunks. 
And all it has to be is when you have to get up to go to the bathroom, maybe turn on music and dance it out for a minute on your way back in. I've really been trying that in the past week and it's amazing how much more space your brain can have to then sit back down and concentrate. For whatever reason, I think human nature is we think, nope, I just gotta keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. And then you're like, what's happening? And so you can stop and have a dance party. Yeah, yeah. Dance party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it usually also makes you laugh at the same time and laughter is also very good. Yes, I love it. Okay, uh, can we touch one more, we alluded to this earlier, but a little bit about the partner, family, kids, what's some good advice for like, okay, you can make a schedule for yourself, but what about these other people that are in the house with you? How do they fit into that? Well, I think early on, I heard quite a few really funny stories about families and partners, and I certainly had some of my own in the house. Um, and kind of maybe coming to a little bit of agreements about who will use different spaces. So it's great if you can say, you'll be in this guest bedroom over here, and I'm going to take the dining room over here. And what I do is I have a big yellow post-it when the door is closed that clearly says either I'm on a call that you can walk in on if you need, or I'm on a video interview, do not come in, right? <laughs> and, or on the flip side, if you're in an open space and you're going to be on an important call that's video, let your partner know not to walk around in the background with party <laughs> on the bottom as we alluded to, right? <laughs> We've been so clear communication yes. between you and your partner. Yeah. Yeah. We've been working Eric and I on timing of his smoothie making because he uses the Vitamix. And so we just got to get it worked out with my morning classes. Every once in a while, I just have to mute the stuff for a minute. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, but it's true. I think we all have to have a little bit of grace with each other. And the best way to do that is if maybe we. I hate to say, well, I don't hate to say rules. As I've previously said, I love structure and I love rules. And those words aren't great for everyone. Right. But I think it's, what are some boundaries you can right. set up just to say, okay, these are the hours that I'm going to be working and I'm going to put a sock on the door, right? Or I'm going to put a post-it on the door if I need to make sure that you can't come in or, you know, what does that look like? Right. And we'll just even do a quick powwow. He'll say, what do you have and when? What do you got going? You know, when do you have a break? And, yep. Yeah. Or even I'll say, I'm coming through. Are you going to be on video in a minute? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this was super helpful information. Ladies, if you have questions for Heather, you can unmute yourself and fire away. Or you could wave at me. Hey, Julia, there's Julia. Let's get Julia going and see if I can unmute. Oh, yeah. I have so many questions, but <laughs> let's start with one, which is, oh, and speaking of interruptions, someone's probably about to knock on my door, just saying. Um, I struggle with how to organize lists. So I've done it a million different ways, like, oh, the things that are due first, I make a list, and things that are distant projects are on another list, or, you know, the absolutely have to have on one list, and the I'd like to do it on another list, or you know, a master list, but I only put three things in for each day. And I basically abandon each one of these strategies within a couple of weeks. Do you have advice for how to, how to keep all of the things that you need to do on a list that is not overwhelming? I don't know. Does that make sense? And I'm listening to you while I open the door for somebody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, it does make sense. And I think that's probably the most common problem that we hear, right? And so I think, it, again, it's different for everyone. I, I've seen some people be really, um, really successful by having maybe a whiteboard that has all of the big things on it that they need to do, but then you just have one posted on your monitor of the thing that you need to get done today. And part of what I love about checklists for me is that it makes me feel productive, helps me feel productive, I guess. And a lot of the things on there are things I'm going to be doing anyway. So do I really need to take the time to write those down on a list versus there are a few things or there's one thing that I have to make sure that I get done today. Another really helpful way is if there's something that's important, but might not be your big goal, but it's something that's important. You have to get back to somebody or you agreed to do this thing, right? Might not take a lot of time, but you have to do it. Set a reminder on your phone that won't clear itself until you physically clear it. I, I found that we have technology that will help us with that. Or 
use your online calendar, which again, you can set to remind you in various ways at various times to do this thing that you want to do. Um, so I think just kind of getting creative and see what really is, is helpful for you. Does that answer your question, Julia? Okay, good. She gave me a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> this is great advice. All right. Anybody else? Questions for Heather. Now's your chance to chime in. I actually have another one if you're <laughs> if you're up for it. So I love the idea of blocking out my my daily calendar with kind of, you know, for two hours I'm gonna work on this project and then for an hour I'm gonna answer emails and this and that. Again, I think there's a little part of me that gets a little antsy about having like I look at I look at the calendar, maybe like your other client, and it starts to feel overwhelming. Like there's too many things on my calendar. So I like the idea of this kind of blocking, but I think if I like, I also don't like to feel confined, you know, or constrained. I'll take my answer off the air. <laughs> no, I think that's good. And I would say if you start to think about what times of day, again, are you better at, oh my gosh, I'm great with communication and emails. And so if I think about when am I really the most productive with emails, then maybe that's the time of day you set that time slot. So it could be that when you're breaking up your day, maybe you don't have the right things in the right time of day for how your brain works. And I would always recommend having a chunk in there that's free time. Mm -hmm. That might be, that might be the piece that's missing. Because I think just in my brain, when I look at a calendar where every hour has something in it, it makes me feel really stressed. <laughs> even if it's just something that says work on the, you know, even if it's broad and not super task oriented, I just get this kind of like, ah, I'm too busy. Yeah, and I think also what can be helpful is if it's a big goal you're working on. So for instance, if you're saying work on the Mighty Network, which I know you're working on getting classes up for there, right? So if it's work on Mighty Network, within that calendar invite, I would put what are the one to three little things you're gonna do to work on. So that, again, your brain doesn't have to think about, oh my God, what are all the things I have to do? It's nope, this is the very next thing I have to do. Then when I do that, that's the next thing and that's the next thing. What's the smallest piece you can narrow the steps down into, again, so that you don't have to think about it? She's nodding and giving a thumbs up. <laughs> Now, Heather, I'm just thinking about how sometimes I'll proca procrastinate on something that's really important, and I might do three little things that aren't as important. What would you say for chomping off, like, something that just feels overwhelming, where you're like, ah, I can't even tackle that right now? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. And again, I would come back to, if it feels really overwhelming, I would challenge you to see if you can break it down into a smaller piece. So even if you feel like this is a really small piece, it's still overwhelming. My guess is it could be an even smaller chunk of thing that you do. Mm -hmm. I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. Leslie's raising her hand. Leslie, I mean, unmute her. Um, sorry, I was a little late, but I'm, and as you can see, in the middle of painting my kitchen, and I <laughs> have um, like four different projects right now going on, a full-time eight-hour job, and then I rush home to do classes and exercise, but it, the amount of stress is just like sometimes overwhelming, and so I'm trying to do small portions of everything constantly, and I'm not accomplishing any one thing. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yes, it does. I think we, some of us are great multitaskers. <laughs> and the reality is it's really hard to do multiple things really well simultaneously. So I would, I would again challenge you with thinking about what if you gave yourself a break next week and focused on one, just one of those things next week, okay. just to try it for a week and see what that felt like. Okay. Yeah. And may I add, Leslie, you were working a full-time, busy, stressful job. You're doing four exercise classes a week. You're taking yeah. care of your house and yard. Yeah. 
Like you are doing a lot of stuff. Give yourself a big old pat on the back for all the stuff you are accomplishing. It may not feel like you're wrapping up any projects, but you've started a bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. but you're doing a lot. Yeah, it's constant. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the kitchen, getting my kitchen back in order today is a must because I can't have it like this next week. So that is my only goal today is getting this kitchen back together because it's just, you know, I, it was too, uh, last week was too chaotic not having my kitchen organized. Uh-huh. Yeah, so that's so my so you don't normally have a refrigerator and a ladder in the middle of your kitchen? That's your <laughs> no, I don't. I don't normally look like this either. <laughs> I can't my hair in a semi, semi bun. <laughs> I, I think that's a great idea, Leslie, to have just one goal for today. And I would bet that you will feel really great by the end of the day. If that's the only thing you work on, you will feel um, a bigger sense of accomplishment for one thing that you really went all out, you can look at it and see versus, I know I tend to get into that too is, oh, there's so many things I want to do. So I start a bunch of things and then I'm kind of finishing some things when I'm in the middle of other things. And then there's really no pat on the back or celebration for the thing right. that I did. You yeah. felt really overwhelmed, just, you know, yeah. tired, exhausted, and you look and nothing's done. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. And guess what? We have control over that right <laughs> i'm learning <laughs> yeah, and I, it's never too late to learn right exactly yep <laughs> and breathe meditate breathe mm -hmm. even if yep. it's i'll just step away and go sit down and take a lot of deep breaths that Anne's taught me how to do the four step breathing process so that's well, and I've talked to a lot of clients this week about just acknowledging the fact that this is stressful. There's, this is unusual. We're in an unprecedented time and just realizing like, there's a lot of stuff stressing me out right now. And then what of that can I control? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Miss Heather, this has been so, so, so helpful. I appreciate you. Thank Do you. we have any more questions for Heather? All right. Oh, thumbs up. Thanks, ladies. This Thank was you. awesome. Very enjoyable. So I'll post this on my YouTube and then I'll put little links down below to all those goodies that we talked about today. Great. Right. Yay. Thank you, Heather. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.